So let's work this out. Let's see if I can get my pen to work. It's going to be the bane of my existence this quarter. Okay. What I do when I tackle these is the first thing I look for is some symmetry. It's at the center of the box, right? Looking at the two corner cues, I see that I'm going to have, let's say, a repulsion. When I look at this one only, I'm sorry, an attraction. I thought that was a negative charge. So I'm going to have an attraction down that way towards the center, right to the, towards the left corner one. But I'm also going to have an attraction equal and opposite up towards that right corner. So just like the Mulliken experiment, those two things are going to cancel each other out, and that negative charge, if the other two didn't exist, would just be kind of like hanging out there all day long. So the beauty of that, I am done with these two. Doesn't matter. Sweet. Now, what's happening with respect to these? Now I'll come on to here. So the negative and the negative is going to repulse. And the negative and the positive, oops, that's also going to repulse or attract. So, but attract in the same direction as the repulsion. So, for this thing that looks totally gnarly, what do I end up with? I end up with a net charge or net force that's going to be going this way. It's going to be the sum of the two. For, for the sake of space, I'm just going to leave that there. Now we need to do some math, though, because I've defined what direction it is, but we can be more specific. Because remember, we have F equals KQQ, Q1, Q2 over R squared distances. Sorry about that. All right, so let's label these things before I start losing. Oops, that pen's gone. Let's label them before we start losing them. Let's call this. That pen is still gone. Not happy with this setup. Yes. We're fine. I'm fine. Let's try that again. And it's still not working. This is how the day has been going. Weekend has been going. If I touch it. Sorry. You need to hang with me because every time I turn it off and get it working, there we go. It changes once I start recording. Okay, so let's call this one, two, three, four. So this one over here, you can call it like force four on one. And this one over here we'll call force, I'm sorry, not four on one. Let's call this five. So this would be force four on five and force one on five. This one here would be, let's see, force 2 on 5 and force 3 on 5. Cool. Now, where was I going with this? Well, we have two charges that are causing this force interaction. I'm not looking at, like, I can't turn this into KQQQ. What I have to do is kind of like with these vectors here. We drew this out, and I'm betting that most of you were like, ah, easy, easy peasy. They cancel out. How did we do that? But what we're actually doing is a sum of forces. Ah, it never goes away. So a sum of forces in the S and in the Y for what this charge here experiences relative to everybody else. By doing it graphically, we know where, what direction the net force is going. It's shooting out this way, right? It's going to be just kind of coming out that way. But now we need to define this 
we don't have numbers, but we do know that this whole length is L. So what does that mean? This distance here is like L over 2, and this distance here is L over 2. So this distance here, well, that's going to be L over 2. I'm going to write it over here. It's going to be L over 2 squared plus L over 2 squared. Square root of. Otherwise known as L squared over 4, or, so I'm going to get L squared over 4 plus L squared over 4. Otherwise known as 2L squared over 4 or L squared over 2. Sweet. So I know what this distance is. This is L squared over 2. I know what R is then. The R is the same for both this charge coming up this way and this charge down here. So the repulsive and the attractive. So I can look at that and be like, okay, so if I want to make this on a coordinate system for my remaining, I can be like, okay, I, I have a force coming out this way. So I have X and Y components. Ooh. So if I have X and Y components of this thing, and what my R is, that means I have to do the sum of the X and the sum of the Y. I don't want to do that. Everything else cancels out. So those are the only two things I'm looking at. So what I'm going to do is instead of doing this, I'm going to do, I can't even make myself do this. There we go. And actually it's like this. We can call this Y. We can call this X. Which means that my force vector is on just the Y axis. Boom. And to make my life easier, I think I'm going to define up as positive. So we'll stay, stick with that. Up as positive, that means down would be negative. Do I need to worry about x? I put it all on the y, so we're good there. So my sum in the y of forces is going to be what? It's going to be k, q, which one? Let's go q1. Q5, because this is looking between this reaction, interaction and this interaction, over R squared, plus KQ4 times Q5 over R squared. We've defined what R is, right? We know what this distance is. That's the square root of L squared over 2. So we can now write this out as being, I'm going to pull out the K, and I'm going to pull out the Q5. So Q1 divided by square root of L squared over 2 squared plus K, I'm just not K, let's get that out, Q4 over the square root of L squared divided by 2, quantity squared. Don't forget, even though I have a negative charge in there, I'm looking at the absolute value of them. Why? Because I've already defined what the impact of that negative charge is going to have on that central charge that we're evaluating. So do not put it in there. You would have been subtracting at this step and that would have been a boo-boo. So we know here, and so my force net equals this. Well, square root squared is going to be L squared over 2. So we can rewrite it again, KQ5 times Q one. Let's see, the two is going to pop up top. I'll get two over L squared plus Q four 
times 2 with the 2 in front over L squared. Now, notice here, we know that Q1, the magnitude of each, Q1 equals Q2 equals Q3 equals Q4 equals Q5. I should say, be explicit, the magnitude of each. So the same quantity, just different signs. So that means I can simplify this whole thing down even more. I can go then K pulling out Q1 and Q4 because it's just going to be a Q. So Q times a Q is going to give me Q squared. And then what do I get? I get 2 over L squared plus 2 over L squared. So combining those two, I end up that then I force the net. is going to be 4 k q squared over l squared. Last thing we need to do, we have to give it direction. So I've defined it in the y. I can either use y hat, go y hat, or if you are comfortable with, let's see, so we have x hat, y hat, and z hat. Other way that you see that is i hat, j hat, and k hat. So I could also write that in terms of the j hat. Don't forget this is a vector quantity, so you want to make sure that you include that piece. There you have it. That's our final answer. So what did we do? First we tackled it, doing it graphically, just looking at the force vectors. Technically, I did this sum. I did that sum. I just did it with the vectors and let them cancel out. What I could do if I wanted to is include them and do an X and a Y and you can actually make that a practice for yourself. Break everything into components and then see for yourself that those two vectors cancel out and go away and um, then you're just going to have things at an angle. Not too bad, but you can still do it. Alright, that's that.